Well, nearly 200,000 Russian troops have been killed or wounded in Ukraine, that number according to the New York Times. The Times notes that U.S. officials say Moscow has been sending poorly trained recruits to the front lines, resulting in hundreds of troops being killed or injured daily. Joining us now, Chairman of the Human Rights Foundation, Gary Kasparov. Thank you so much for being on with us this morning. Do you think these numbers um, of the Russian troops that we're talking about, that numbers of, of those killed and injured and perhaps not as experienced as they should be, is known across Russia? Um, unlikely. Uh, Putin regime controls the um, uh, information, and I think Russians can suspect that uh, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Russians have been killed and wounded. Uh, Ukrainian numbers are probably at the range of 130,000, plus many died in hospitals because of very poor treatment. So I would say that, you know, the numbers were already exceeding 200,000, and the numbers will climb because troops are poorly trained. But Putin doesn't care. And he still has resources to, to throw uh, into the battle enough cannon fodder. And while watching this this uh, uh, this uh, report, uh, it's I, I, I was crying. These lives could have been saved if American weapons, the long-range missiles, could be su supplied to Ukraine months ago, because they would they would have hit Russian missile bases that are killing Ukrainians. The West mm -hmm. and, and, and the United States sitting on the weapons that could have changed the course of the war months ago. And by the way, the tanks that are being promised to Ukraine will not be there in weeks, in months. You should months. listen to the reports from, from Pentagon or from, uh, from the German Minister of Defense. They are still talking about repairing these tanks, buying them, you know, just taking them from somewhere. Ukraine is fighting the war NATO was built for in 1949, defending Europe against Soviet Russian invasion. Is doing it single-handedly. And I don't understand why these weapons are still being preserved. For kind of, what, what kind of war do you expect? The war is there. And nobody yeah. wants boots on the ground. But please, give Ukraine what you have. You are sitting on these weapons that can, could have changed and still can change the course of this war. Gary, your latest article for Foreign Affairs is entitled Don't Fear Putin's Demise. You write in part, quote, Putin's effort to restore Russia's lost empire is destined to fail. The moment is therefore ripe for a transition to democracy and a devolution of power to the regional levels. But for such a political transformation to take place, Putin must be defeated militarily in Ukraine. A decisive loss on the battlefield would pierce Putin's aura of invincibility and expose him as the architect of a failing state, making his regime vulnerable to challenge from Within. You heard the report, uh, uh, Putin's threats of, of nuclear weapons. Uh, do, you, do you not fear that? Do you not fear that if Putin is pushed to, to, to the wall and if he feels that there's an existential threat not only to his regime but to his life that he would use nuclear weapons? Oh, by the way, he hasn't said nuclear. It's, you know, it's a fantasy of those who are trying to pretend that, you know, the hypothetical threat of, of nuclear uh, attack uh, could uh, make us slow down supply of, of weapons to Ukraine. Putin talked about uh, different kind of wars, but he never, never mentioned nuclear in the in the speech. I listened it, it's, it's in, in Russian original. So that's why, again, be sure that, you know, Putin keeps playing the same card. He's, he's bluffing. It always worked. And now he could sense that there is still a weakness on the side of his counterparts. I'm not talking about Ukrainians who are resilient, who are fighting heroically. But look at uh, America and Europe. There's still disagreement about the strategic goal of this war. We still have senior members of this administration talking about negotiated outcome. They're trying to push this false narrative mm -hmm. that every war ends up at negotiating table. That's nothing could be further from the truth. World War II, the war on the values, uh, never uh, has not ended on negotiating table. American Civil War has not ended on negotiating table because when you fight for principles there's nothing to negotiate so uh I so let, let me repeat the question though gary uh and and we agree on much uh, and we have agreed on much for a very long time uh but um i think you actually do have to worry about uh, a madman who is sitting on more nuclear weapons than any other country uh, on the planet. Do you not fear the possibility that Vladimir Putin could resort to using nuclear weapons? No, I, 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 anything can happen. You know, you could have a big asteroid hitting Earth. Yes, definitely we should take into account well, that there, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a little there, different there, there, there is a chance, asteroid but, hitting well, Earth. If we, had, if, we had, if we had more time, you know, I could tell you that the chances are, are, are very, very small. But the problem is, you know, if we 
um, let this blackmail work, then, you know, we have to probably close NATO. Because then the same threat will be used uh, to conquer Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, any, any other, other country. Uh, this, mm -hmm. is, this is a unique moment where we can actually end this, 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 this story of Russian empire and offer, you know, Russians and countries surrounding Russia a, a chance to live in peace. A simple thing. If Putin stays in power, the war will never end. Because every empire survives only by expanding. Economically, Russia is in terrible shape. There's, there's no hope of economic expansion, which means war. So beating Putin on the battlefield and creating conditions for his removal in Russia, because many Russians, you know, as, as has happened uh, before in our history, will never forget uh, uh, the, the military defeat, the geopolitical catastrophe. That's the, that's, that creates ripe conditions for, for regime change in, right. inside our country. So that's, that's, that's the best hope for everybody, not only Ukrainians. So we remember the chaos in Russia, the anarchy in Russia after the, the fall of the Soviet empire in 1991. Uh, I'm curious, do you, do you fear a repeat of that uh, following, uh, let's say, if, 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 if Vladimir Putin is removed, it, do you fear the possibility of that? Do you fear the possibility of, of, of anarchy and chaos in this uh, nuclear state? Uh, yeah, you said collapse of the Soviet Union and the chaos. Yeah, there was a chaotic transition, but uh, yeah, there were even some local wars. But today, probably one day, Russia, Russian troops killed more people than died throughout the whole year of 1991. Uh, so the, the collapse of Putin regime will not lead to an immediate democratic transition. It, it, it's, it will be a very chaotic uh, process. And, you know, it's like a roadmap, you know, through the jungles. But preserving Putin regime offering him chance of, uh, to, to uh, escape from, the, from this trap and, and present uh, uh, his regime as a winner in this war mm -hmm. and uh, reneging on the fundamental values of, of uh, peace and, and, and rule of law, that's, you know, that's much worse. It's not that we have, a, we have a great choice now. It's about the lesser evil. The lesser evil for, for the world and the only opportunity for us to enter the, the uh, new uh, era of peace is to arm Ukraine to the teeth. So again, this is, it's, 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 nobody expects Ukraine to survive for that long. But remember CIA, four, four, four days, 96 hours, key will fall. You remember General Milley saying no weapons to Ukraine a year ago, Tester and Capitol Hill, because Ukraine army would not survive. So they all were wrong. And now, let me tell you, give Ukraine all the weapons. They'll do the job. And then we'll see what happens, because the alternative is much worse. It's America's responsibility to make sure that Ukraine survives, because it's a front line of freedom. And for those who worry about China, yeah, China is watching now. And because Ukraine is, 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 is doing so well, China is having probably second thoughts about Taiwan. But if Putin wins, and every, every uh, outcome of this war, if Putin preserves his, his territorial gains, that's a victory. China will, 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 will reconsider its position toward Taiwan. I have no doubt about it. Chairman of the Human Rights Foundation, Gary Kasparov, thank you very much. Uh, strong case. Thank you for coming on the show this morning. Thank you for We really appreciate me. it.